this is Gavel to Gavel, WCBW-TV's complete coverage of Richmond City Council. Good evening once again, I'm Dick Harmon. Welcome to our second meeting of the month of May, and you're probably wondering why are we here on Tuesday instead of Monday. Well, very simple. Monday was a holiday, so we are here on Tuesday. This is the only time of the year we meet on a Tuesday instead of a Monday. Also, it's the uh, last of five consecutive months where we had two meetings each month, uh, starting next month for... Uh, June, July, August, September, we're scheduled to have just one meeting. Now, I say scheduled because they are allowed, if they need to, call a second meeting on the fourth Monday of that month. So we will find out as we go along. But right now, we're um, having our second meeting of May, and then we will not have another meeting until June 8th, and then not another until July 13th. So let's see what we got going on for tonight. 16 items on consent, 2 on regular. Well, let's take a look at where we are. Item 1, Ordinance 2014-208, and this one is establishing a Richmond Archaeological Commission that's being continued till July 13th. Item 2, Ordinance 2014-217, this would establish a downtown tourism zone, and that's being continued till July 13th. Item 3, Ordinance 2015-96, Authorizing the CAO to uh, execute a project agreement for use of Commonwealth transportation funds. And this is for the purpose of receiving a grant of $1.5 million to fund Phase 3 improvements to Main Street Station. That stays on consent. Item 4, Ordinance 2015-97, authorizing the CAO to execute four invoice agreements between the city and Greater Richmond Aquatics Partnership. And what this is for, this is for renting a swimming pool facility for the Department of Public uh, Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Competitive Swim Team Practices. So that one stays on consent. Item 5, Ordinance 2015-98. Special use of 320 North 32nd Street for the purpose of a mixed-use development. That one stays on consent. Item 6, Ordinance 2015-99. This is uh, authorizing use of real estate at uh, 501 North 2nd Street for the purposes of constructing a four-story office building. This one is going to be amended tonight and then continued until July 13th. Item 7, Ordinance 2015-100. This concerns the Main Street Uptown Parking Overlay District. This will modify the boundaries of such district and establish some new parking standards, and that stays on consent. Item 8, Ordinance 2015-101, amends the official zoning map. This is to rezone certain properties along West Main and West Cary Streets between Harrison and Meadow. It includes certain properties in the P03 Main Street Uptown Parking Overlay District. That stays on consent. Item 9, Ordinance 2015-103, this concerns real estate taxation of certain dwellings of the surviving spouses of members of the armed forces that were killed in action. This is for the purpose of reflecting amendments to the Virginia Code, which basically would give them uh, lower rates. And that stays on consent. Item 11, Ordinance 2015-106. This is one of those papers that declares a public necessity exists at 1114 North 26th Street authorizes a conveyance to Elder Homes Corporation and uh, makes this property available for redevelopment. It stays on consent. So there's number 12. Ordinance 2015-107. Again, public necessity, 1207 North 27th Street and conveys the property to Elder Homes Corporation uh, for redevelopment. Item 13. Ordinance 2015-108. Declaring a public necessity at 1208 North 33rd Street. And this authorizes conveyance to Richmond Metropolitan Habitat for Humanity for making property available for redevelopment. Stays on consent as does 14. Ordinance number 2015-109. Public necessity at 1425 North 20th Street. And conveying that property to Richmond Metropolitan Habitat for Humanity. Making such property available for redevelopment. Those are all staying on consent. Item 15, this authorizes the CAO to execute a standard project administration agreement with VDOT to provide funding for the restoration of Main Street Station. 
And then item 16, ordinance 2015-112. This is concerning taxi cab rates and a special discount for elderly or disabled passengers for the purpose of providing that for a trip originating at Richmond International Airport, the rate shall be $10 or the charge registered on the meter, whichever is greater, plus $2.30 instead of $2. That stays on consent. On the regular agenda, we've only got two items. Item 17 is Ordinance 2015-79, and this is requiring the fiscal impact statements and economic impact statements be submitted to Council upon the introduction of a mayor patron ordinance authorizing certain economic development projects to be funded or supported by the city. This one's going to finance and economic development and will come back to Council on the 13th of July. And item number 18 is Resolution 2014-R258. This is reversing the decision of uh, Commission of Architectural Review and the decision denied a certificate of appropriateness for proposed painting of exterior brick portions of a condominium of 407 North Allen Street. This paper would serve to reverse that and allow that to go ahead. That's being continued also. It says on the paper, it's continued on September 14th, but in the informal meeting they said it's going to be continued till July 13th. So that's what we'll go with right now. In any event, it's not going to be heard tonight. So where do we stand? 16 items on consent, two continued, one amended and continued, so we're down to 13 items there. On the regular agenda, two items, both continued, so nothing on the regular agenda. Citizens' comment period, we have six speakers tonight. Among the topics I'll be talking about, Maggie L. Walker statue, GRTC caravan, Richmond Police Memorial statue, UCI Road World Championships, Police Memorial Statue and Appreciation to Council for approval of the pay raise. This coming from, uh, I believe, a member of the Police Department. So that's Citizens' Comment Period. We've only got two items on the awards and presentations. One is uh, Richmond Mental Health Awareness Month, and one is the Richmond Region Energy Alliance Solarized RVA Program. Those two are there. So, And don't forget, the new way they're running the uh, meetings, things have changed, and... Uh, this is the way it goes now. We'll start off the invocation, Pledge of Allegiance, Roll Call, Emergency Evacuation Plan, then awards and presentations, and then Citizens' Comment Period. It's been moved around over the years, but now it's coming up right after awards and presentations. Then we get the actions on appointments and reappointments, followed by the agenda review and amendments. Then we'll get to the regular agenda. Well, there is none tonight. And then consent agenda, followed by the approval of minutes, reports from council, new legislation, and then adjournment. So that's uh, the way it stacks up now. How long will we be here? Who knows? That's always a question. It could be a short meeting. It could be, who knows? It could be longer. We'll find out because we'll be getting started in just about five minutes from right now. I'm Dick Harmon. Stay tuned.
-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting will now come to order. At this time, we will be given our invocation by Reverend Dr. Jim Somerville, the First Baptist Church. Let us pray. Lord, sometimes we say that we want to be completely fair, that we don't want to take sides. And yet you do all the time. You always take the side of the poor, the dispossessed, the disenfranchised. You always stand up for those who have been put down, pushed around, and shoved to the fringes of society. It becomes clear that if we are not on their side, we are not on your side and could end up on the wrong side on the day it matters most. And so on this day, give us permission to take sides and the good sense to take yours. Amen. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance. Madam Clerk, please provide the Chamber Emergency Evacuation Announcement, followed by the Citizen Speaker's Guideline. Upon activation of the emergency alarm signal, all persons should immediately exit the building. Please use the exits to the left or right front of the Council Chamber or the east or west stairwells outside the rear doors of the Chamber. Do not use elevators or escalators. After exiting the building, proceed to the assembly area located in the parking lot bordered by Clay, 8th, and 9th Streets. Citizens and employees should assist visually and hearing impaired visitors with exiting the building. Citizens wishing to speak during public hearings and or the citizen comment period have generally three minutes to speak. Persons appearing before council are not allowed to campaign for public office, promote private business ventures, use language of a personal nature which insults or demeans any person including comments directed at public officials or staff members that are not related to their official duties or address or question staff members directly. All questions are to be directed to the president of council. Failure to adhere to the guidelines may result in speakers forfeiting any remaining time and further disciplinary action as necessary, which could include barring from attendance at future meetings of the city council for a period of six months. Madam President, for the record, all members of council are in attendance this evening. And individuals standing in the rear of the chambers are asked to please be seated where seats are available per council's rules of procedure. And also I would like to remind the audience that applause is only permitted during the awards and presentations portion of tonight's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, we have uh, the new director of social services, uh, Ms. Shonda Giles. If you'd like to just come forward and say a few words. Good afternoon, and those words will be very few. Um, my name is Shonda Giles. I am the new director of social services, and I really do look forward to working with you all, and I'm very excited to be able to serve my city in this capacity. Thank you very much. You. <laughs> Madam Clerk, let's move on to the appointments and reappointments. Yes, council members, you've been provided a listing of appointment and reappointment recommendations from your standing committee. Is there a motion to accept the recommendations as presented? There's a motion and a second. Council is voting on the appointments and reappointments as presented in the packet. Mr. Belisles? Aye. Ms. Graziano? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Agilesto? Aye. Ms. Robertson? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Vice President Hilbert? Aye. President Mosby? Aye. That motion has passed. All right, at this time we'll move on to the awards and presentations for the evening. Okay, tonight's first recognition being presented by 7th District Council Representative Cynthia Newbill proclaims May as Richmond Mental Health Awareness Month. Mental health has a significant impact on learning, social development, and general well-being and can affect individuals throughout their lifetime. There have been significant advances in behavioral and brain research that are positively affecting the field of mental, behavioral, and emotional health. 
a sterling example of a mental health organization serving the richmond community is the richmond behavioral health authority a quasi government entity which was established by richmond city council in one ninety six and provides mental health intellectual disability and sub substance abuse and prevention services on behalf of richmond residents to help raise awareness of the importance of assistance education and treatment of those living with mental health issues and respond to an increasing number of military veterans returning from combat during World War II in 1994, a National Mental Health Awareness Month was begun in the U.S. In order to further affirm the need for good mental health and advocate on behalf of our children and families, Richmond City Council and Mayor Dwight C. Jones hereby proclaim the month of May to be Richmond Mental Health Awareness Month Thank the many dedicated mental health providers and supporters and encourage all Richmond residents to support the mental and emotional health resources, services, and, cares, indivi and care individuals and families need to live happy, healthy, and prosperous lives. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Lindstrom, if you would join us. Simply would like to express our sincere thanks and appreciation for the incredible leadership, advocacy, and services that RBHA has, but even more so is preparing to provide in this community and service to uh, the many citizens who are addressing on a daily basis the, the challenge of mental health. We know very well that in our, throughout our Commonwealth and throughout our city, the need uh, far exceeds the capacity. But I have to say and, and recognize and appreciate you and your leadership I really have to say that I am uh, much more comforted that we are on the right track. We are not there yet, but making major inroads in terms of providing mental health quality, patient-centered mental health services for the citizenry throughout the city of Richmond. And I just, just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much, and um, uh, most of you know that uh, I succeeded uh, Jack Lanier as CEO of RBHA uh, last August 1st, and um, I'm not completely unfamiliar to you. I want to introduce to you by her presence, Ms. Sinead McRae, who has uh, uh, been with RBHA for some time, but ascended to the role of mental health director uh, for the authority uh, just this last fall. I'm looking forward to um, the opportunity to address the Organizational Development Committee of Council later this summer to give you a fuller report of goings on at the RBHA. But I might tell you that we've um, entered in the business of delivering um, right now the four R's. Uh, we're not an educational organization for sure, but our mantra right now uh, centers around some exciting new developments that we're undertaking. I won't go into all the details right now, but they involve enhancements to mental health, intellectual and developmental disability services, as well as substance abuse services. R for recovery, R for rich, which is our integrated primary behavioral health care that we've initiated and now have served over 500 people since last June 1st and have enrolled over 300 people in ongoing services and federal um, data reporting for the grant that sustains that program. Uh, RIT, uh, REACH, which uh, used to be called START, and some of you are familiar with that, uh, but RBHA now is the property owner of three acres in Chester, uh, where we're building um, a six bedroom center for individuals in need of respite or crisis services who have intellectual and developmental disabilities. And we have a very major undertaking to assure the presence of the kinds of services that Rubicon provides in our community will be sustained well into the future. And I'll tell you the details of that later. Thank you very much. Dr. Lindstrom, again, thank you for all that RBHA is doing in our community thank to you. address mental health. The next recognition being presented by Council Vice President and 3rd District Council Representative Chris Hilbert recognizes the Richmond Region 
Energy Alliance, Solarize RVA, for helping to increase the use of solar energy. Established in 2010, Richmond Region Energy Alliance is a nonprofit organization that assists Richmond area residents with accessing services to help increase the energy efficiency of their homes and businesses. As part of this effort, in 2014, the Richmond Regional Energy Alliance created Solarize RVA, a bulk solar panel purchasing program to help reduce cost and encourage and increase the use of solar energy by area homeowners and businesses. Maximizing utilities of scale, Solarize RVA bundles individuals, customers together to purchase solar systems and contract installations as a group. It, is also, it also assists with tax credits and discounts and other cost reduction efficiencies. Richmond City Council hereby recognizes, honors, and celebrates the Richmond Region Energy Alliance and their Solarize RVA program for helping to increase the use of solar energy and encourages everyone to learn more about this program and consider the possibility of solarizing their homes and businesses. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and thank you, Ms. Hill, for coming out. Uh, last month, I believe it was, here time flies, I was at a wonderful event on uh, South Side where we had an unveiling of a home with solar panels and uh, it was just so exciting to see so many people there uh, and the energy efficiency that will be allow this, uh, this family to get off the grid for the most part, which is, which is very nice. We all want to promote the efficient use of our resources and our natural resources and I thought this would be a good opportunity for Solarize RVA to come and to get more information about this uh, program which is why I invited Ms. Hill uh, here this evening so if you could explain more about the program we want to get the word out to it so as many Richmonders can take uh, advantage of this as possible and even the whole region. Uh, thank you for your work. Okay. Thank you so much Councilman Hilbert. President Mosby and the entire council. It's wonderful to be here this evening and thank you so much for the recognition. Uh, my name is Tara Quinn, um, a marketing and outreach consultant for Richmond Region Energy Alliance um, and want to thank you all on behalf of our executive director and the entire board of the Richmond Region Energy Alliance. Um, the Energy Alliance is a wholly owned subsidiary of Project Homes and so I want to acknowledge their involvement as in well as launching the program. Um, and Solarize RVA 2015, this is the second year of our Solarize RVA program. Uh, in the first year, we were able to uh, install uh, solar systems on 20 homes in the area, and this year uh, we've expanded the program to include commercial applications, so um, the, the impact is widening, um, and we so much appreciate your support in raising awareness about the program and the opportunities that it presents to uh, the city of Richmond and the entire Richmond region as well. So. Thank you very much. Yeah, the website is uh, www.solarizerva.org, um, and that can provide all the information available to learn more, sign up. We've already had over 50 folks sign up this year for the program um, since its launch on Earth Day, and it runs through uh, just July 15th this year. So I um, urge everyone to check that out as soon as possible. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. So Madam President, that concludes our awards and presentations for this evening. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move on to review the amendments to tonight's agenda. Amendments to tonight's agenda are as follows. Item 1, Ordinance Number 2014-208 will be continued to the Monday, July 13th Council meeting. Item 2, Ordinance Number 2014-217 will be continued to the Monday, July 13th Council meeting. <coughs> Item 6, Ordinance Number 2015-99 will be amended and continued to the Monday, June 8th Council meeting later this evening. Item 17, Ordinance Number 2015-79 will be continued to the Monday, July 13th Council meeting. And Item 18, Resolution Number 2014-R258 will also be continued to the Monday, July 13th Council meeting. Madam President, those are all of tonight's agenda amendments. Does any council member have any additional amendments to tonight's agenda? Madam Clerk, please call the question. 
I will need a motion to accept the amended agenda as presented. Council Member Agilasto, will you make that motion? So moved. Council Member Bilal, will you second that motion? Second. Council is voting on this evening's agenda amendments as presented. Mr. Bilal? Aye. Ms. Graziano? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Agilasto? Aye. Ms. Robertson? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Ms. Newville? Aye. Vice President Hilbert? Aye. President Mosby? Aye. The amended agenda is before you. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, if we could go back to our citizens' comments period speaker, please. Yes, the first speaker is Melvin Jones. Melvin Jones. Good afternoon. Can I get somebody to pass these out, please? Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Melvin Jones, and I'm a, a resident of Richmond, Virginia. I come before you this evening to um, discuss the um, statue for Miss Maggie Walker. Um, back in October 25th of 2010, um, City Council had passed a paper to do a study. I guess it was a study to um, put a statue of Maggie Walker at Adams Broad and Brook Road. But um, it's been bypassed. Um, they, they got, you got a budget here, estimated budget of $300,000. Before Mr. Marshall had left, I asked him about giving up a million dollars for the project, which it wouldn't took a million dollars. But city council had passed the paper before, and people are not doing what y'all asked them to do. Now, I've got over 100,000 signatures to put a statue of Maggie Walker at Adams Broad and Brook Road, but they're not following up what they're supposed to do. Now, you know, if we can pay $300,000 for somebody to do this drawing and upscale apartments at Lee Street and just not doing what, what y'all ask them to do, you know, I don't want this project to be like it was over there at Hugh and that where you paid somebody $193 an hour to pass a water. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous the way people are spending taxpayers' money. That's my money. So what, what I want to do is I want somebody to get behind this. It was supposed to be the city attorney. I haven't heard anything from the city attorney about this at all. Nobody. Ms. Mosley? Yes, sir. I, I'm actually uh, looking over at my vice president. Okay. Was but, you know, other council members have, have questioned me about it, and I don't know what's going on. So, you know... I, I'm almost left in the blind on it. You know, I met with the mayor and um, uh, Mr., let's see, who else, David Hicks, and we had a meeting up here at the second floor conference room, and the mayor even, so he, he even said that he would like to see the, the statue of Maggie Walker put at Adams Broad and Brook Road. So my thing is, somebody not working together. Okay, M Mr. Jones, we're going to let Vice President Hilbert respond to I know, Mr. Jones, you and I have spoken on this matter, um, and I think things have not moved as swiftly as we would like. There is certainly, uh, there was money in the budget last year uh, to begin this process, and the Arts uh, Commission here, if I'm, I, I'm probably not getting that name right, but they have met on this and are working towards the design, are they not? or? Yes, sir. The design has, I'm um, supposed to have been done, and I, my, from what I hear, there's supposed to be, somebody's supposed to be coming here and meeting and going through checking the sites. But when the guy did the drawing and I saw it, I mean, I was blown out the, blown out the water on that one because it's like, you know, you're not doing what council tell you to do. You know, I mean, um, Mr. Mr. Hilbert, if you can bring the bicycles here, you can bring a beer company here. I mean, this black lady right here, Miss Maggie Walker, she lent the city of Richmond ten thousand dollars. I mean, come on now, y'all, get up off your butts. Come on, help me out. You know, I mean, somebody's not doing their job, and I'll be down here every day if I have to find out what I need to do. I even called the mayor's office to try to get a meeting set up before I came to council. I ain't getting no feedback. I did hear from Mr. Rogers, but um, you know, it's. People are not doing what they're supposed to do, and if they're not going to do it, i like to know because people are asking me what's going on with the Jones. statue for Maggie Walker. Mr. Jones. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Your time is up. Thank you. And I'll certainly uh, look into that, and we can 
I'll get you exactly where we are in the process, uh, Mr. Jones, and I appreciate your involvement in this, and certainly this wouldn't be going anywhere. We wouldn't have any funding in the budget uh, were it not for your actions. So thank you. The next speaker is Roderick Bullock. Good evening, Council President, Vice President, Honorable City Council Members. Um, I'm coming to speak on the behalf of uh, for myself and the citizens that ride the caravan. Um, I had an opportunity to go to the meeting um, for the, the advisory committee, and pretty much GRTC said it, that we need to come before the city council because you all made the choice to make us uh, pay uh, two tickets to go to the county. Also, they pretty much basically said that the city council is the reason why our services suck. I mean, ultimately, I mean, that's, that's what they were saying, that you need to talk to your council members because they only give us $12 million to run a budget for the whole entire um, GRTC budget, and the county matches ride for ride as far as paratransit, which is uh, an atrocity to the people um, because ultimately we have the highest uh, rate of poverty in the state of Virginia. It's 25 percent as far as city citywide metro metropolitan areas, and ultimately you all don't care. I mean, I honestly don't think no one cares about the disabled. And um, I didn't ask to be disabled. I, I I was fine, as everyone up here know that I was fine. But ultimately, I have to depend on the C van now, and the service is horrendous. And we was trying to get answers. Um, why the services, we can't get services out in the county. We got to get out at a certain time. And they treat us like we're inhumane. We got to get out of the county by 7 o'clock. And they said, oh, that's the city council for. Talk to your city council members. And that's what, and he directly told us to talk to these city council members and find out why they, they raised the, and they said it was a 63 vote that you raised it for two tickets into the county. You know how much of a financial burden that is on people? And I didn't know about that at first, but now I know. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge financial burden. You all need to rethink and revisit that. I mean, ultimately, it's, it's a shame that we, as citizens that put our life and give our back to this city, and as hard as I work for this city, and I haven't got anything, anything with as far as it is I've been disabled, as far as how the disabled is being treated, and everybody, it's, a, it's, it's seriously a problem that people in poverty and people that's disabled get the worst end of the stick. We are the lowest on the totem pole. And we have no respect from the city. And then I hear this in a meeting that you all did that to, to people that was impoverished already. And I mean, it's, it's, it's serious. Y'all really need to think that. Every member, especially the 6th, 7th, and 8th, 5th, 2nd, none of you all should have voted for that against the national, it was like a war on poverty. You shouldn't have voted on that. A 63 vote, and you and this is what happens? Y'all really need to think that. Everybody that's in your district is only maybe one, two districts in the city of Richmond that is affluent people. The rest of us are in poverty, and that's a shame. I'm, a, I'm appalled at all y'all that even to make that decision to even do people and put that burden on people. It, it is you paying $12 Sir. to go to the county. Thank you. Summarize. The next speaker is Glenwood Burley. Good evening, Madam President, members of council. Congratulate you on your position as a president. I'm Glenwood Burley. I'm a 42-year resident in the city of Richmond in Ms. Graziano's district and a 23-year member of the Richmond Bureau of Police. Just two blocks away up Marshall Street, near 7th, sits a beautiful bronze police memorial statue with 28 names of Richmond police officers killed in a line of duty. For decades, this statue, approximately 10 feet tall, has been neglected and abandoned. I'm not burning my three minutes tonight criticizing how this statue became as it is However, it is a fact that mayors, past and current council members, including presidents, Richmond police chiefs, and current police officers 
have never seen this stature nor knew it existed most sadly my fellow retirees and other current officers including the members of the police memorial foundation and myself who knew this statue existed yet we agreed usually disrespected this beautiful gift from the public i come tonight to apologize to apologize on behalf of all who have allowed this beautiful memorial to stand among the weeds the trash the beer cans and the smell of urine in the darkness of silence at 7 a.m. Friday morning the last day of National Police Week I sat in front of police headquarters with a dozen red roses waiting for Chief Durham shortly after he arrived and therefore shortly after that he placed the roses at the statue that was a new day it was his first trip there his first knowledge that I'm a moral existed it was unexpected what he witnessed policemen marines paratroopers usually don't cry i've cried twice this month once at the statue with the pungent smell of urine that cut my breath and the other last week when i was with chief durham we shared the pain of what we'd seen we embraced each other in his office and formed a bond committed to never allowing us statues to stand in vain a research and relocation site committee is currently being selected chief durham has accepted to serve this morning i got contact from tom silvester the president of the time dispatch he's accepted to serve and i have one of the gentlemen in side of the country and i haven't gotten a response back from him arrangements are already in place and they have that a uh, statue moved at the conference of a family owned crane company once a new night site is determined assistance has been requested from the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts to get that statue cleaned up as soon as possible the city has been instrumental since Mr. last week Mr. Burley to do cleaning Mr. Burley in, could you please summarize in closing as our current city leaders I please ask upon you that in the next several days that you visit that memorial hold his hand and reflect in a moment of silence and pay your formal respects i appreciate your support and input and madam president i welcome a volunteer member from the council or you to appoint member to serve as a liaison to our committee i have kept ms robinson ms graziano and ms trammel informed of the objectives and a clean up i ask those here tonight in support of our efforts to please stand quietly and acknowledge our support thank you ma'am and members of council thank you madam president mr chairman i have a question glen yes ma'am i have a question you called it what did you say something about a research what did you call it research site research has a purpose because this uh foundation was formed 30 back to 35 38 years ago and there was a considerable amount of money raised one of the things we want to look at as a committee is if there is any money left which there's speculation and words to the wind that there is we want to know where it is who has it what account it's in and utilize that money and and uh in the aspects of moving it and cleaning it up and so forth and that's one of the things that we're going to investigate okay and see if it's any members of the foundation still around and living so far i know of none that have contacted me all right i want to keep you all informed of what we're doing and uh i'm optimistic with the two members that accepted the service to be on the committee I want to have a liaison if you'll give me one and uh get this statue cleaned up and moved and my date is thanksgiving week and thank you and also when we get our new money i think it comes in july i will also make a donation to this um research site i'll make a donation okay thank you ma'am i think there are numerous resp responses from the country since this has became a media issue of wanting to make donations of pledges to help in getting a statue moved and cleaned up so we've had a unique and uh unexpected amount of support from people in the city and the country wanting to to help and put sunshine on that statue. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Graziano has a question. Yeah, Mr. Burley. I actually don't have a question. Just two things. One, I want to thank you for your service to the city of Richmond. And I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention 
into making something great happen to this memorial so that we can all once again be proud of it. And if you need any help, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Michael Gilbert. Good evening. Now, um, hang on one, one quick second. I know Ms. Capella, I've requested an additional minute or two. Is that? Uh, President Mosby would be able to respond to that. He's asking President Mosby concerning his email about additional minute or two concerning um, the incident with the phone call from the police department. That's an additional to what he's going to speak about with the UCI. Is that? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I was just looking for maybe a minute or two just to highlight that issue because it actually was caused by my citizen comment. Um, okay, thank you. Um, my name is Michael Gilbert. I reside in the 7th District, uh, President Mosby, Mosby and members of council. First, I want to bring to your attention, um, I got a very interesting phone call um, last Friday uh, from Ms. Veronica Pearson at the police department who, uh, unbeknownst to me at the time, turns out was the general counsel for the police department. Um, and who inquired about the nature of my comments uh, upcoming to citizen comment. Um, and quite frankly, that really took me back because it's, and I don't mean to be blunt here, but none of the business of the police, what I'm going to say during citizen comment, uh, nor anyone else. Uh, it's public comment. Um, and it really upset me because this has never happened before when I or I think anyone else has spoken during citizen comment. So it, it makes me wonder why was I singled out? And I called uh, the clerk's office and Ms. Capel, and she was very helpful uh, and explained to me the process uh, and explained that when they send information, the clerk's office sends information over to the administration, um, it includes the citizen, uh, their name, their district, and their topic, and no other information. So how did and under what authority did the police department then decide to get my personal cell phone number and give me a nice friendly jingle asking about the nature of my comments? Uh, it's pretty upsetting. Um, and so I, I actually talked to uh, Chief Durham, and he was very helpful uh, and was very nice. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out, and I'd just like to bring to your attention, um, why was I singled out, uh, and who authorized uh, this individual to contact me, especially the general counsel. I mean, no good deed goes unpunished. I get it, but come on. Um, and on top of that, how did this individual get my personally identifiable information? And who authorized that? Because it sounds like there's a broken process and broken policy in there somewhere. Uh, it's just really upsetting and troubling to me and uh, pretty offensive and unprecedented. So um, just putting that out there. Now, I'll get to the, the heart of my comments. Thank you for the extra time. Um, as a member of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board for the 7th District, uh, I'd like to share with you the plans from Richmond 2015 and the Parks Department uh, for the upcoming event. All right, you ready? The plan is to cut the grass along Libby Hill and Taylor's Hill Park, recalk a statue, replace some windows, and finally, replace, literally replace cobblestones on 23rd Street Hill because it was paved haphazardly about three years ago. That's the plan. That's it. Now, I've called and spoken with Parks and Rec, and I've requested something, anything, that could serve as a more concrete plan of action, a document, a PowerPoint. Um, but there isn't one because that's it. Nothing else is being planned. Nothing. Now, a recent article examined the 450,000 visitor figures. So let's just say we take 10% of that. 45,000 of those individuals are unique, right? These visitors are coming here to the city because they love cycling. They come from a culture where cycling is an alternative transportation. It's just transportation. They love the outdoors. So shouldn't we be planning activities, events, or have some sort of action plan, anything to show our guests a good time? So, I don't know, maybe they'll come back next year and we can get more money into our local economy every year thereafter. Now let me bring something else to your attention. Uh, and where this is all rooted and how I figured all this out was um, I co-founded a local nonprofit, Ride Richmond, I'm not promoting it. Uh, our mission is to educate cyclists through events. And a year and a half before Richmond 2015, I submitted a permit request for us to be at Taylor's Hill Park on the 27th of September. And I was promised in writing that permit. And about three weeks ago, I was told I have to now go through Alan Rothert. All right, that's fine. So I call Alan, and Alan tells me that all of Taylor's Hill Park has a major title sponsor, and that space for tents are being sold. Now I should call Tim Miller at 2015. So I call Tim. Tim tells me the same thing, and that the park will be for VIP access. I don't even know what that means, okay? Now the argument that both 
Alan and Tim have put forward is that the city needs to generate money, which justifies selling the park. I get that. I'm not arguing that the city needs to generate money. I mean, I was the city economist, okay? I get it. But what I am arguing is that we, the organization, was promised this permit a year and a half before the event, and now it's not being honored. And beyond my personal issue with that, it's really frustrating that there's been no plan whatsoever to include local residents or local groups in these parks. There's no communication because there's nothing to communicate. This is an opportunity to showcase the event, to highlight the local residents and local groups that contribute to bicycling year round and have done so for decades, okay? Now, I will say that Dr. Merrifield has promised that no parks will be closed to the public. He said that. But let me ask you this. Do you really believe that Joe Loco will be able to walk onto Taylor's Hill Park, adjacent to the 23rd Street Hill, arguably the biggest climb, I'm, I'm tracking, I'm gonna summarize, the biggest climb and draw for the 2015 event, next to VIPs whose organizations have paid thousands of dollars for tent space, next to an organization that's paid a six-figure amount to become the title sponsor and have an equally good view of the race? If you think that's plausible, I applaud it, but I don't. And I could be completely wrong. In fact, I'm fine with that. I hope I'm wrong. But let's have the communication and the dialogue and the discussion to prove me wrong. So my request to you is this. Which one of you elected to represent us and the facilities we pay for will step up, patron, and help pass an O&R that requires at least 25% of the park space, public park space, Mr. Gilbert. be reserved for access for local residents and local nonprofit groups. If this is truly a once in a lifetime opportunity, let's get it right. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Newbill? Yes, Mr. Madam Gilbert. President. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, thank you. Uh, thank you first for serving as our rep on Parks and Rec. And um, it, just in follow up to the conversation with Mr. Gilbert regarding Taylor's Hill Park and the permit, the um, uh, opportunity to have further discussion. I've spoken with Alan Rothert as well as Dr. Merrifield. I think Dr. Merrifield is in the audience and would love to appreciate the opportunity for him to meet with Mr. Gilbert to discuss the possibilities further relative to the park, et cetera. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Capel, do you have a response in reference to? Yes, to Mr. Gilbert. Um, Back to your earlier comments about the police department contacting you and how they obtain your personal information. Um, when you and I spoke via phone, uh, I advised you about the administrative docket. Those documents that we take to administrative docket do not have personal information. However, per council's rules of procedure, page 13 indicates that we are to collect uh, addresses, telephone numbers, and identifying information from individuals wishing to sign up for citizen comment period. And I was advised that someone following administrative docket came to our office and requested um, the address information. And um, it's also my understanding that the general counsel for the police department also reached out to one or two other individuals who were signed up to speak. So that's how they obtained the information I've later found out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next speaker is Kelly Wentz. Hi, my name is Kelly Wentz, and I'd like to thank everybody for having me here tonight. I am a North Chesterfield resident, but I also am co-founder and president of an organization called United for Blue. I am here tonight um, on behalf of the Richmond Police Memorial that's located at Festival Park. <coughs> I understand Mr. Burley has done a wonderful job presenting it to you this evening. I knew nothing about this memorial until I saw it on the news and my heart broke. This memorial was dedicated May 16, 1987. It has 28 names on it from 1869-2003. I'm gonna name a couple of those names because I want you to know them. Officer Douglas Wendell, end of watch, 7.30, 2003, shot and killed while responding to a call. He was shot four times. He left behind a wife, two sons, 
a daughter, brothers, and a parent. He was dedicated for five years on the Richmond Police Department. Police Officer Thomas Francis Mongo McCann, end of watch, 10-14-1998, shot and killed after a vehicle chase. He dedicated 20 years to the Richmond Police Department. He left behind a fiance. Detective George Ronald Taylor, end of watch, June 15, 1986, shot and killed during a traffic stop. He dedicated 13 years to the Richmond Police Department. He left behind a wife and two daughters. He was killed the day before his 40th birthday. How fair is it that we have forgotten these people, these officers? They gave their lives for us. We left that statue there unknown. Nobody knew about it. Chief Durham had it cleaned up, thankfully, but this memorial needs to be honored. They gave their all for protecting us. I went downtown this weekend and I polled people within the community on the streets of Carytown and Shaco Bottom. I talked to approximately 128 people. Out of that 128 people, three heard about the statue, never saw it. They heard about it through the news. That's sad. That shouldn't be that way. These officers gave everything. This is not how our fallen should be honored. We should have that statue out in plain view. People need to know this memorial. They need to move this memorial. We need not to forget about them. I thank you guys for listening to us. And please, let's move it. The next speaker is Brad Nixon. Evening, Madam President and fellow council members. Um, my name is uh, Brad Nixon. I'm a detective of the Richmond Police Department, been here 12 years, and uh, I'm vice president of the Richmond Coalition of Police. It gives me great satisfaction to come to you tonight, basically to give you thanks and praise. Um, I. I, um, I'm speaking on behalf of the 260 members um, of the Richmond Coalition of Police and several other police officers that are um, thoroughly ecstatic of the, um, that you guys were able to come together and find money in the budget for air step increase this year um, within career development. I know you guys have a thankless job. Uh, we totally understand that. Um, over the last several months, up into the last year, you've um, invited us into your office, listened to us speak, listened to either myself, or our president or Bill Panelli to speak on our behalf. Um, you've read our emails and responded back to them for that, I thank you. Um, the only reason there isn't a large contingency with me this time is other, there was a little confusion on the, uh, on the date of this meeting on when we were gonna have it, and I felt that it was important for me to come before you sooner rather than later. Um, so I just wanna say uh, thank you for, uh, for listening to us, um, for having our back and for um, and for doing what you do and for um, finally f after five of the last six years not having a step increase we are extremely thankful I have people come up to me daily now recently during this process as we've been uh, watching it unfold and thanking me and I tell them you need to thank City Council because you guys were the ones that listened um, and were able to make the change and find the funding for us so I just want to say thank you very much and president thank you Mr. Allen. Brad, I want to thank you for taking your time to come down here. I know a lot of people have been calling myself and they wanted council members' numbers and all that. And I said, just come down here. And I want to thank you for coming down here to thank all of us because this is what it took a team of all nine of us to do this. And thank you all for what you all do every day for us. Thank you. Madam President, that concludes our list of citizen speakers for this evening. Madam President. Ms. Robertson. Um, I want to thank all the speakers for coming down and their comments this afternoon. Uh, I'd like to go back to Mr. Bullitt um, as it relates to the caravan and ask if the staff would uh, request a presentation uh, to the Land Use and Transportation Committee in regards to the uh, comments that were expressed. Um, and secondly, uh, the statue, um, um, the police memorial statue is in the 6th District, and um, uh, I would be more than happy to have um, 
my liaison to serve on the committee if it would please the council to do that as well for the relocation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robertson. Madam Clerk, please provide a review of, of tonight's items on the consent agenda. Madam President, the consent agenda items for tonight are as follows. Item 3, Ordinance Number 2015-96, to execute a project agreement between the City and the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation for the purpose of receiving a $1.5 million grant to fund improvements to Main Street Station. Item 4, Ordinance Number 2015-97, to execute four invoice agreements between the City and the Greater Richmond Aquatics Partnership for the purpose of renting a swimming pool facility for the Department of Rec... Well, Department of Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Competitive Swim Team Practice Sessions 1 through 7. Item 5, Ordinance Number 2015-98, to authorize the special use of 320 North 32nd Street for the purpose of a mixed-use development. Item 7, Ordinance Number 2015-100, to amend City Code concerning the Main Street or Uptown Parking Overlay District to modify the boundaries of such di district and establish new parking standards. Item 8, Ordinance Number 2015-101, to amend the official zoning map for the purpose of rezoning certain properties along West Main and West Cary Streets and in the Main Street or Uptown Parking Overlay District. Item 9, Ordinance Number 2015-103, to amend City Code concerning the real estate taxation of certain, certain dwellings of the surviving spouses of members of the armed forces killed in action for the purpose of reflecting amendments to Virginia Code. Item 10, Ordinance Number 2015-105, to amend City Code concerning bus fares and to appeal City Code Section 110-118, concerning transfer points for the purpose of authorizing a fair pass program and repealing requirements concerning transfer. Item 11, Ordinance Number 2015-106, to declare that a public necessity exists and to acquire 1114 North 26th Street and to authorize the conveyance of such property for $1 to Elder Homes Corporation for the purpose of eliminating blight and making such property available for redevelopment. Item 12, Ordinance Number 2015-107, to declare that a public necessity exists and to acquire 1207 North 27th Street and to authorize the conveyance of such property for $1 to Elder Homes Corporation for the purposes of eliminating blight and making such property available for redevelopment. Item 13, Ordinance Number 2015-108, to declare that a public necessity exists and to acquire 1208 North 33rd Street and to authorize the conveyance of such property for $1 to Richmond Metropolitan Habitat for Humanity Incorporated for the purposes of eliminating blight and making such property available for redevelopment. Item 14, Ordinance Number 2015-109, to declare that a public necessity exists and to acquire 1425 North 20th Street and to authorize the conveyance of such property for $1 to Richmond Metropolitan Hab Habitat for Humanity Incorporated for the purposes of eliminating blight and making such property available for redevelopment. Item 15, Ordinance Number 2015-110, to execute a standard project administration agreement between the City and the Virginia Department of Transportation to provide funding for the rest restoration of Main Street Station. Item 16, Ordinance Number 2015-112, to amend City Code concerning taxicab rates and a special discount for elderly or disabled passengers for the purpose of providing that for a trip originating at Richmond International Airport, the rate shall be $10 or the charge registered on the meter, whichever is greater, plus $2.30 instead of $2. Those are all of the items on tonight's consent agenda. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, we'll have a public hearing on the consent agenda items. Are there any persons who wish to speak in opposition of any item on the consent agenda? Are there any persons who wish to speak in favor of any items on the consent agenda? Bring it back to council for discussion. Um, I would ask um, item number 2000 and 2015-103, uh, item number nine. I wanted to see if all members of council wanted to be added to that as patrons. Yes. We can call that to question, please. Madam, Madam President, oh, I'd just Ms. like Angela. to say one, one thing about um, two different papers that are on the agenda tonight uh, okay. relating to the uptown area. One is a rezoning of uh, the urban business district and the other one uh, addresses a parking overlay district for the corridor. Uh, and essentially, the two of these were uh, to fix some uh, clerical challenges from earlier adoption of ordinances. And I believe that the planning department has done a lot of work to try and reconcile some uh, zoning issues and to make sure that businesses uh, were in compliance when perhaps earlier the 
the ordinances were not accurate i do think also i'd like to share that that this will enable for more of the mixed use development being that urban business zoning allows for residential development with one off street parking space per every four units i think by reducing the parking requirement for certain businesses within the u b of the uptown area that this will actually encourage more development for commercial properties rather than for additional residential so i think that this is a good ordinance and i appreciate the work that the planning staff put into it thank you thank you mr angelista madam clerk if you could call the question please council is voting on tonight's consent agenda items as presented mr bilal miss graziano i mr samuels i mr agilasto i miss robertson i miss trammell miss newbill i vice president hilbert i president mosby i those papers have been adopted okay if we could move on to papers that need to be amended and continued this evening Yes, we have one for consideration, and that is item number six, which is ordinance number 2015-99, to amend the ordinance which authorizes the use of 501 North 2nd Street to permit medical office uses. And the proposed amendment to that paper is as follows. Page three, line seven, after the inserted word spaces, insert the phrase for all uses other than clinical dental or medical office uses page three line eight after the inserted word a strike the word 1200 foot and insert the word 1000 feet foot page three line nine after the period following the inserted words property insert the text if any portion of the building is used for clinical dental or medical office uses the following parking related requirements shall also apply one parking spaces for clients of the clinical dental or medical office uses shall be provided on site the number of parking spaces required to be provided for these clients on site shall be the lesser of a percentage of the 57 parking spaces required by this subsection c to be on the site equal to the percentage of the spaces in the building that is used for clinical dental or medical office uses or 34 parking spaces. Two, if chapter 114 of the Code of the City of Richmond, 2004, as amended, requires more parking spaces to serve the clinical, dental, or medical office uses in the building than those provided on site pursuant to subsection one of this subsection C, the remaining parking spaces required shall be located within 300 foot radius of the front door of the building. Three, notwithstanding provisions of subsection one and two of this subsection C, no more than 145 parking spaces shall be required to serve on all uses of the building. I will need a motion to accept the proposed amendment to that paper as read and to continue the paper to Monday, June the 8th. Councilwoman Graziano, will you make that motion? So moved, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Robertson, will you second that? Second. Council is voting on the proposed amendment as read for item number six, ordinance number 2015-99, and to continue the paper to Monday, June the 8th. Mr. Belisles? Aye. Ms. Graziano? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Agilesto? Aye. Ms. Robertson? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Vice President Hilbert? Aye. President Mosby? Aye. That motion has passed. That paper will be before you on Monday, June the 8th, as amended. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there papers for expedited consideration this evening? There are no papers for expedited consideration. This All evening. right, let's move on to the approval of the minutes. The minutes to be approved are from the special council meeting held Monday, May 4th at 529 p.m. Special, counting, special council meeting held Friday, May 8th at 4 p.m. Informal meeting held Monday, May 11th at 4 p.m. Informal meeting held Monday, May 11th at 6 p.m. I need a motion to approve those minutes. Councilman Belaz, will you make that motion? Ms. Graziano, will you second? Second. Council is voting on the motion to approve the minutes as read. Mr. Belaz? Aye. Ms. Graziano? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye, with the Mr. exception of May 8th. I was not present, so I must abstain. Okay. It will be noted. Mr. Agilesto? Aye. Ms. Robertson? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. 
Vice President Hilbert? Aye. President Mosby? Thank you. Those minutes have been approved. Thank you. Let's move on to reports and announcements. Starting with Ms. Graziano. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to say a little um, belated. I hope everybody had a wonderful Memorial Day. I hope everybody had fun outside of picnics, going to the beach, going to the pool. But I would also hope that everybody took a minute or two or maybe five minutes to remember those who have given their lives for this country and to give a separate thanks to so that. Personally, I just hope everybody did that. Um, the only other announcement I have is finance will be held in June, on June 4th at 3 o'clock in Chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Trammell. Thank you, Madam President. Last Thursday, May 21st, we had our 8th District meeting, and our chief was there, Chief um, Durham, and he was speaking to the citizens and to the children about that we all got to do our part to help the police and help one another in our neighborhoods because we all know that our police officers can't do it by themselves and we can't do it, the citizens can't do it by themselves. So that's why he's encouraging us to start more neighborhood watches in our neighborhood. And if you would call this number, and that is um, Sergeant Carol Adams, her phone number is 646-4069, 646-4069. She can get you to the right person to start your neighborhood watch in your neighborhood. And we all know that neighborhood watch does work. But, um, and also let me just say this. When you have a neighborhood watch or when you're trying to help your neighbors, don't call your neighbor to tell them that somebody is trying to get in their home or somebody's on their front porch or that somebody is taking pictures of their home or somebody is shooting in front of their house. Please, please call 911. You must call 911 because they're the only ones that can dispatch the police to the, um, to the area where the crime is, is, is happening. So again, please call 911 to report whatever's going on. This right here is your smoke alarm. If you call 646-1526, that's 646-1526, those firefighters will come to your home and they will install this for free. It doesn't cost anything. It's probably the only thing that's free right now in the city of Richmond is these free smoke alarms. And if you can't get them, you can go to the nearest fire station and get them to um, come to your home, come to your business, come to your church, and install this. And if it needs a battery, they'll put the battery in there because we all know that these smoke alarms save lives. And they will save your pet and save your home. And as our President of the United States of America, Barack Obama, says, it's no sense in not having this working smoke alarm in your home. Get it while it's free. And if you have any questions, you can call my home at 233-7382. That's my home, 233-7382. And my personal sale is 240-5050, 240-5050. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Newbill. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would like to invite all seven district residents to come out tomorrow evening, Wednesday, May 27th at 6 p.m. to the East District Center located at 701 North 25th Street. We will have a community meeting there, which will be a joint meeting with the impact team for our community. It will be an opportunity to meet and greet our new uh, Chief Administrative Officer, Ms. Selena, Selena Cuffey Glenn, as well as obtain uh, updated information on the UCI World Cycling Championships. Uh, we'll hear from uh, Dr. Thad Williamson um, of the Office of Community Wealth Building. We'll have budget highlights as well as an opportunity to hear from our school board representatives. So tomorrow evening, 6 p.m., East District Center uh, would like to, again, extend an invitation to all seven district residents to come out and to be a part of the community meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Agilesto. Thank you very much. Um, tonight, if folks are still watching, they can get to the Oregon Hill Neighborhood Association in about two minutes. Uh, that will start at 7. We're, we're usually too late in these announcements for that to make a difference, but uh, they'll be meeting over at the Williamburg Community House uh, momentarily. Uh, then on Monday, June the 1st, at 7 p.m., the Hull Street Midlothian Civic Association will be meeting at Conania Christian Church at 3600 Grand Street. And I want to um, extend my personal thanks to the Civic Association, as well as Hands on Greater Richmond for a wonderful turnout during our fifth district cleanup um, that they hosted us down in that neighborhood. And it was really remarkable to see 
that many people come out and we covered a very large territory and I feel like uh, everybody walked away feeling that they made a difference. So thank you for, for that opportunity. On June the 2nd, which is a Tuesday at 6 p.m., the Uptown Association will be meeting. Then the next day, June the 3rd, will be our fifth district meeting. We're hosting that at 6.30 p.m. at the Randolph Community Center on Grayland Avenue. And I'm pleased to announce that uh, Ms. Selena Cuffey Glenn also accepted our invitation to be present for the uh, district meeting on June the 3rd at 6.30 p.m. But we will also have some other presentations from our um, Parks Department, primarily the James River Park System, and also um, from our friends at the Emergency Management uh, Division. Uh, this week, uh, for those of you that don't know, is the tax holiday for all emergency preparedness supplies. Uh, so if you are in need, if you do not have your home emergency kit, please um, go online, learn about fixing your own kit, and take advantage of the tax holiday that is this week. On June the 4th, the Friends of William Byrd uh, Park will also be meeting over at the Roundhouse, and I'm, I'm excited to say that there's some exciting things happening in the park, lots of more volunteers coming out to support William Byrd Park uh, as one of the city's largest parks and home to the July 4th fireworks. And that is it for my announcements. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Robertson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, there are two meetings that are coming up in the 6th District that I'd like to invite all of the citizens of the 6th District to attend. The first meeting will be this week, May the 29th, at 5.30 at the Bell Me Community Center located at 1800 Lynn Haven Avenue um, this Thursday, May the 29th at 530. Uh, there will be several uh, vendors that will be exhibiting services that are available to the residents in the community. Um, some, many of the churches in the area that are providing summer camp uh, opportunities for your children. Um, the recreational and parks will be there to share information of available outings for, for our youth this summer when they get out of school. Um, in addition to that, we will have uh, some uh, churches in the area that are providing services and other uh, businesses in the area that are providing services as well. Um, we will also have a representative from Richmond Public Schools that will be addressing uh, the much talked about concern about the growth in population of our school age children in Southside, uh, where we will talk, um, give you detailed information on the amendments that are made to the budget to address that overcrowding in, in Southside Richmond and also um, have a representative from Richard Public Schools to uh, provide opportunities for preschool registration um, for next year and talk uh, specifically about their plans for bringing in mobile units and other uh, facilities to address the overcrowding and our outward future planning that is in process. So that's Thursday night, May the 29th, at the Bell Me Community Center, uh, beginning at 5.30. And then on June the 9th, we will have our North of the River uh, Town Meeting at Hoshkiss Field uh, Playground, uh, which is located on Brooklyn Park Boulevard. That meeting will begin at 5.30. Um, and we uh, are expecting a host of uh, different uh, representatives from the city of Richmond as well as others uh, to be on hand to likewise prepare ourselves for our children getting out of school and addressing those needs that parents have to make sure that we keep our children engaged in learning experiences over the summer months. So that will be on June the 9th at Hoshkiss on Brooklyn Park Boulevard, beginning at 5.30. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Robertson. Mr. Balaz. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to echo Ms. Graziano's comments about Memorial Day. I attended the service at the Virginia War Memorial yesterday and um, encourage everybody to visit there if you get a chance. Uh, one of the best views of the city, but also a very moving Memorial. Uh, just one announcement. We do have a town hall meeting tomorrow 
evening at Albert Hill Middle School on Patterson Avenue at 6 p.m. Uh, originally, the chief had been scheduled to be there, but uh, he was invited, to, he was already poached away by Mr. Hilbert to his town hall meeting, and then he was gonna come to mine, but he was uh, offered an invitation to speak to a veterans group, and since he is a 17-year uh, veteran of the Marine Corps, I figured I'd better just wait until July. So the chief will be with us in July, and um, certainly that's, uh, that's an event that he didn't wanna miss. So, um, but we will have our regular meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. at Albert Hill. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Vice President Hilbert. Thank you, Madam President. As uh, Mr. Belisles just indicated, um, that this week, uh, Wednesday, May the 27th at 6 p.m., we'll be having our next district meeting at Linwood Holton Elementary, uh, located at the corner of Laburnum and Hermitage Avenues. And our guest uh, will be uh, Chief Durham, and we appreciate uh, his involvement and if truth be known here he's had uh, some other meetings that he's had to cancel on us before uh, but we're glad to see that he's making it and uh, another special guest will be council member Reva Trammell uh, we've had uh, other council members to come to the third district meeting and I appreciate her willingness to be there and to discuss uh, issues uh, of which she's most familiar and uh, her mission and vision for her 8th district in Southside and how we can uh, collaborate with those north of the river uh, as well. Uh, we also will have Council uh, Deputy Chief of Staff Vincent Jones and myself will debrief on uh, the budget issues and the outcome of our budget. Uh, this summer, <clears throat> excuse me, the Parks and Rec uh, activities are uh, are underway some of them but you can still sign up by going to richmondgov.com and navigating to the parks recreation and community facilities link uh, there are classes in aquatics art and dance and there's a variety of summer camp experiences so i would encourage you to participate in those as well as have your uh, children do the same if you would uh, like to be added to the email distribution list to receive district announcements, uh, which also include uh, announcements concerning city government and activities, uh, please email Lisa Towns, T O W N E S, at richmondgov.com or call her at 804 646 6055. If you're contacting me via email, please be certain you're using my city of email excuse me, City of Richmond email address, which is chris.hilbert at richmondgov.com. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Vice President Hilbert. Um, I would first like to acknowledge the passing of Delegate Frank Hall. He honorably served in the legislator, legislature and was a board member of the RRHA and just wanted to say that he will be missed. Also, um, wanted to commend council and the school board. Um, today, we had our first joint meeting and um, it was a pledge to begin to work together and um, for the good of our, our students. And so I'm just excited about that first joint meeting. Um, also um, in the district, we will have our first of our summer neighborhood walks with the police on tomorrow, Wednesday, May 27th. Um, please meet us at the Farnbrook entrance of the Farnbrook subdivision starting at 8 p.m. Um, our next di district meeting is not until um, June 18th, but we also will be having our new CAO, uh, Selena Cuffey Glenn, and so we're excited that our uh, district will get to meet her on that day. Um, if our residents have any questions or concerns, I can be reached at michelle.mosby at richmondgov.com, or you can reach my uh, liaison, Harris at richmondgov.com, and his number is 804-912-6465. All right, Madam Clerk, please read the introductory papers for this evening. Madam President, the introduction papers for this evening are as follows. Ordinance number 2015-114 to authorize the CAO to accept $31,000 from the National Recreation and Parks Association Incorporated and to appropriate to the Department of Parks, Recreation, Community Facilities for funding the summer food and the child and adult foods program. Council public hearing June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. 
ordinance number 2015-115 to authorize the CAO to accept $18,000 from the Supreme Court of Virginia and to appropriate to the judiciary for drug treatment services through the Richmond Adult Drug Treatment Court Program. Council public hearing June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-116 to amend FY 2015 general fund budget to transfer $55,000 from the Department of Information Technology for the purpose of providing a grant to the Richmond Ambulance Authority for software licenses. Council public hearing June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-117 to amend FY 2015 general fund budget by reappropriating $250,000 from the fund balance excess um, and to appropriate to the Department of Planning and Development Review for distribution disbursement to the F uh, for the Arts and Cultural District Facade Improvement Program Corporation Agreement. Governmental Operations Standing Committee, May 28th at 5 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-118 to reinstate the career development program for certain police and fire officers. Governmental Operations Standing Committee, May 28th at 5 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-119 to revise the implement implementation schedule for sworn firefighters and police officers to provide for salary increases and step advancement. Governmental Operations Standing Committee, May 28th at 5 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-120 to authorize the CAO to accept $23,000 from the National Association of County and City Health Officials and to appropriate to the Department of Social Services for initiatives to increase breastfeeding in the city. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-121 to authorize the CEO to execute a sublease agreement between the city and the county of Henrico for renting certain offices and common spaces at 203 East Cary Street, Land Use Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, June 16th at 3 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, July the 13th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-122 to authorize the CAO to execute a sublease between the city and the school board for the purpose of subletting office space at 4100 Hall Street, Land Use Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, July 16th at 3 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, July 13th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-123 to authorize the CEO to accept $252,000 from GRTC and to appropriate to GRTC to fund the construction of a temporary transfer plaza and a system-wide bus stop sign replacement project. Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, June 4th at 3 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-124 to amend and reordain ordinance as previously amended for financing the school budget for the fiscal year to ending 2000, June 30th, 2015, for the purpose of appropriating additional funds. Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, June 4th at 3 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-125, to amend FY15 general fund budget by transferring and appropriating transfer funds to various agency and non-departmental programs. Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, June 4th at 3 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-126 to approve the work plan and budget for FY16 for the provision of services in the downtown Richmond Special Service and Assessment Districts. Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, June 4th at 3 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-127 to amend and reordain city code for the purpose extending the participation period in the Deferred Retirement Option Program. Governmental Operations Standing Committee, June 25th at 5 o'clock p.m. Council Public Hearing, July the 13th at 6 o'clock p.m. Ordinance number 2015-128 to authorize the CEO to accept $125,000 in additional state shared sales tax funds for the purpose of providing additional school funding. Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, June 4th at 3 o'clock p.m. 
Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Resolution number 2015-R35 to approve an expenditure in the amount of $1.1,000 from the Council District Funds to pay Sisters Delight LLC for catering service provided at the January, March, and April 2015 9th District meetings. Council Public Hearing, June 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Madam President, that concludes the readings of the legislation for tonight. Thank you, Madam Clerk. There being no further business before the Council, this meeting is adjourned. Well, one hour, 17 minutes, start to finish tonight. We got started right at 6 o'clock. Call the order, the pledge, the invocation, appointments and reappointments, awards and presentations. Got to the citizens' comment period at 6.17. That ran 30 minutes. We had six different speakers. Got to the uh, consent agenda. That took a whole five minutes by the time they read everything in. Uh, there was no opposition, no one speaking from the audience in favor or opposed. And uh, that went through 9 nothing. Then we got to one paper being amended and continued. And then we got the approval of minutes, reports from council, introduction of papers. And now we are adjourned. And now, once again, we are adjourned till June 8th is our next meeting. There's only one meeting scheduled in the month of June, in the month of July, in the month of August, the month of September. They normally uh, do not meet during the month of August. We'll just have to see how that goes. But in any event, we'll be with you on June 8th, our next time together. And uh, please, warmer weather, drive carefully, don't overdo anything, and we look forward to seeing you again on June 8th. Till then, for Gamble to Gamble, I'm Dick Harmon saying good night.